Hello, hello, and welcome everyone to Varsity Tutors, where we are so excited to be joined by Dr. Emma Oshrin, the director of the Budverse Community Science Program at the Chicago Botanic Garden. Today, we'll have a chance to see how the plants all around us have a story to tell, and we'll even get some insight on how we can help them tell that story. Now, before I hand things off to Dr. Emma, I wanna make sure we're prepared to make the absolute most out of today's live class. So throughout the class, Emma will have some questions for you, and we're guessing you'll have some questions for her as well. So feel free to use the chat panel in the right-hand side of your screen to ask Aunt Emma any questions you might happen to have and to answer the questions she'll have for you. And if we don't get to your questions in real time, we'll have about 10 minutes at the close of the lesson specifically set aside for Q&A. You'll also wanna be sure that you have your cameras handy. Toward the end of the lesson, we'll have the opportunity to lean into the screen for a selfie. And if you tag Varsity Tutors and Chicago Botanic on Instagram, you'll have the opportunity to win a Flower Families game plus a three month membership to VT+. We'll talk more about the prize and the specifics on how to enter a little bit later on. But in the meantime, I'm gonna go ahead and hand things off to Dr. Emma Oshrin of Budburst. Hi everyone, thank you so much for joining me today. As Haley said, my name is Emma. I am the director of Budburst at the Chicago Botanic Garden. And today we are going to learn all about plants and we are going to learn about the stories plants tell. And if you're interested in this talk and what we talk about today, you can help us tell our plants stories. You can become Budburst scientists just like I am, if you're interested. So to start off, we are going to go over what we're gonna to learn today. So we are going to talk about a few different things. We are going to talk about how we use plants every day, how we rely on them, how they are all around us. And you're gonna help me discover some of the ways that plants are all around us in our homes, outside of our homes, everywhere we are. And we're gonna talk about how plants change throughout the seasons. We're gonna talk about seasonality in plants and how they change throughout the year. We're also going to talk about climate change and about how climate change can impact plants and about how that effect on plants can also impact us ultimately. And lastly, we are going to talk about how you can become budber scientists and you can help save plants all around you in your neighborhood, in your backyard, and in your communities. So to get us started, we are going to go on a quick scavenger hunt. So don't do anything quite yet. We're gonna wait until I say go, but when I say go, I want you to look around the room that you're in. Maybe you're in your house, maybe you're in a classroom. I want you to find something that came from a plant. And while you are doing your scavenger hunt and looking for something that came from a plant, I will be doing a scavenger hunt too. I will look for things that came from a plant around me. And at the end, we are going to share what we found. I will show you what I found in this room and you can tell me what you found in your room. So we're gonna do this very quickly, just for one minute when I say go, okay? Ready, set, go. So while you're looking, I'm gonna find things in my room too. And then we are going to go over all of them together. If you found something quickly, you can go ahead and type in the chat and tell me what you found. Maybe you found something from your fridge. That's a hint. A lot of things come from plants are things that we eat. Maybe you found something in your room or around your house. I'm gonna give everyone a little bit more time to find something. And then when you find something, bring it back to wherever you are or remember what you found and come back to your computer and type in the chat and tell me what you found. And I will share some of the things that I found in my room. Okay, we are going to get started. If you can hear my voice, come on back to your computer, bring whatever you found and let me know what you found, type it up in the chat and I will show you what I found around here. So the first thing that I found right here, this probably looks familiar to everybody. This is a carrot. Does anybody know what plant part this is? We eat this on the plant, but where does it actually grow? So some people are noticing this grows underground. So this is actually the root of a plant. 
So this grows underneath the ground and we are actually eating the root when we eat this carrot. So this is a piece of a plant that we eat. We have another thing here that is food. This is a clementine, kind of looks like an orange. So this is the fruit of a plant. This is another thing that we eat from plants all around us. Now I have something special. I have this chocolate bar. Now, how many people knew that chocolate comes from plants? You might not think that initially, but we actually get chocolate from a plant called a cacao tree. So we get the chocolate from that plant and then we turn it into something yummy that we can eat like this chocolate bar. So now one other thing I want you to notice is that this chocolate bar also has raspberries in it. So we not only have the chocolate from the cacao plant, but we also have this fruit from raspberries. So we've got multiple plants that are giving us this chocolate bar. Now, I found a lot of things that are food that we eat, but I also found a few things that are not food, but that still come from plants. So we've got this wooden spoon. You might use this in your kitchen while you're cooking. And this is made out of wood. And this is something that comes from a plant. I don't know exactly what kind of plant this comes from, but we've got wood from a tree making this spoon for us. Now we also have this notebook paper. So paper also comes from trees. And we take this from the trees and we turn it into paper that we can write on. So if you've got paper around you, that comes from a plant. Now, if you haven't already, type in the chat and tell me what you found in your house. And let's see, I've got some people saying that you've got uh, spinach. That's great. Uh, that is the leaves of a plant and maybe you're eating the stem as well. Um, and let's see, we've got some people saying that they also found pieces of wood in their house. Maybe you're Dinner table is made out of wood. So that also comes from plants. Um, so I want you to think about whatever you found, think about what plant it ultimately came from. And if you can, think about what part it came from. Um, so let's see. We're also gonna think about what of these plant parts we might have eaten. So we talked about a couple of these already. We talked about how Spinach is the leaves of plants. You might also have lettuce in your salad. That's leaves of plants as well. And sometimes we eat the stems of spinach, but another example is also celery. That's like a big stem that you might eat in a salad. And we talked about roots that we eat, like the carrot that I found in my room. And we also have a lot of different fruits that we eat from plants. So I showed you a clementine. It looks like some people in the chat have found apples, uh, that's perfect. Grapes. So a lot of different fruits that we eat are coming from plants. And a lot of you have found that in your house, in your fridges. That's perfect. Um, okay, fantastic. So overall, what we talked about just now and what you gathered and helped all of us learn are the ways that plants are an important part of our lives and how we rely on plants every day. So these plants are the food that we eat. Sometimes they make up the furniture in our houses. They're the paper that we write on. You can see in the image on the screen here, sometimes we have houses made out of wood. So in that case, our home is going to be the plant that we are uh, talking about in this case. So we've got homes made out of wood. Now maybe that's people living in these homes. There could also be other organisms that are taking shelter in plants. And we'll talk a little bit more about that later on. So that's perfect. Thank you so much for helping me go on that scavenger hunt. So now we are gonna talk about how plants change throughout the seasons. But before we talk about how plants change throughout the seasons, I want you to think about how you change throughout the seasons. So let's say that it is December. It's winter time, it's cold outside. If you wanna go outside, what is something that you might wear? What's something that you might put on? Type in the chat, tell me what you might wear when you go outside. Okay, so I see people giving me a bunch of options. We've got winter coats, that's perfect. We've got mittens, scarves, hats. So we are going to get bundled up and get warm when we go outside because it's cold outside. So that's what we do in the winter time to help us because that's the season that it is. Now, what's something that you might do in the summertime that you wouldn't necessarily do in the winter? 
an activity that you might do if you live by a lake or by an ocean, or maybe there's a swimming pool in your hometown. Tell me if you can think of the activity that I'm thinking of, type in the chat. Okay, so perfect. So in the summertime, we can go swimming wherever we have access to a pool or a lake. So that's something that we do in the summertime, but we don't do in the wintertime, right? At least most people. Um, so that's what we do when we go through different seasons, but plants also go through changes throughout the seasons. So what we are gonna talk about in this next section is how plants go through different changes throughout the seasons as well. So they might not be the exact same as us, where they go through changes like putting on a winter coat or going swimming, but plants are also gonna go through their seasonal changes too. Okay, and we are going to play a guessing game with plants and their seasons in just a minute. Okay, perfect, we're all set to go. So we are going to look at some pictures of apple trees, and we're going to look at these pictures of apple trees in the four different seasons. And I'm going to let you guess what season you think each picture is from. So I'll show you a picture and then you tell me what season you think that picture came from, okay? So here we've got, obviously you can choose from spring, summer, fall, and winter. And these are the pictures that we're looking at. So we've got a tree that has leaves that are green and yellow. They're changing colors. So type in the chat, tell me what season you think this is in. Okay, this one, everybody is right on with this one. This is fall. So we know that leaves change in the fall. So our apple tree is going through this change in the fall season. It's leaves are changing color and um, maybe starting to fall off this tree. Okay, perfect. So now we've got two new pictures here. This is our apple tree uh, with brand new leaves. So these leaves are just coming out. They're small. They're brand new. What season do we think this is in? Type in the chat, you can type your answers. Okay, perfect. So this is in springtime and you might be seeing this outside your windows in your backyards around your neighborhood right now. So you can see that as the leaves are coming out of the branches, they are emerging for the first time this season, this year, we're seeing these brand new baby leaves come out in spring. Now, when do you think apple trees actually make their apples? We can think a little bit about the picture we just saw. So we saw brand new baby leaves in springtime. These leaves on these pictures, they look full grown, right? They're dark green, they're much bigger, about the size of the apple. So what season do you think this is? Okay, yeah, so some people have summer, this is great. So we start to see fruits on our apple trees in the summer after those little leaves that come out in spring start to grow and turn into these big full leaves. And we also see fruits emerging. Now, what do you think this picture was taken in? Is this spring, summer, fall, or winter? We've got no leaves, looks a little bit cold. So this is our tree in the winter time. So we've lost all the leaves from the fall. They fall off in between those seasonal changes. And our, our plants are shutting down for the winter. So they don't have any leaves. They don't have any flowers. They don't have any fruits right now. And then one more bonus. If you've got flowers on your plant, when do you think this is taken? So you can notice we've got leaves on there. So that might give you a little bit of a hint. You could also look outside right now to maybe give you a hint. So this is also from spring. Plants tend to get their brand new leaves and their flowers in the springtime. So you're probably noticing a lot of plants right now that are waking up because of the nice warm weather and they're starting to put out leaves, starting to put out flowers. So we just went through all of these different seasons and all of the changes that an apple tree goes through as it moves through these different seasons. So we can see that in spring, we get new leaves and flowers. In summer, we start to get fruits on our trees. In fall, we lose our leaves and, or our leaves change color and start to fall off. And then in winter, we start to have bare trees without leaves. Now, does anybody here want to learn a big new word? Something that describes this process. Okay, great. I'm seeing some people excited to do that. 
Um, so the word that we are learning today is called phenology. So you have just been going over these different seasonal changes in plants. When you played that guessing game, you have been doing phenology. Now this might be a word that is brand new to you, but you already know how to do this work because you've been looking at the flowers in the spring, when leaves change colors in the fall. So you are already scientists that are studying phenology. You're looking at the timing of seasonal changes in plants. If you look outside and you notice when plants go through these changes, you are studying phenology. And that's what I study in my job at Budburst at the Botanic Garden. Perfect. So what have we learned? What did we just talk about? We talked about how plants change with the seasons, just like we do. We might put on a winter coat in the winter and go swimming in the summer, but plants are going to do seasonal changes a little bit differently. They might grow new parts like leaves and flowers and fruits, and their parts can also change as they go through the seasons. So maybe the leaves change color or wilt or fall off. So all of those things, those seasonal changes in plants, that's what I study and that's what you can study too if you want to help us by becoming budburst scientists. And what this is called is the study of phenology. Okay, so next we have a question for all of you. So one of the things that we wanna know is how plants know when it's time to grow new leaves and flowers. So how do they know when it's time to make these changes in the spring? So type in the chat what you think it is, A, B, C, or D. We've got A, it's getting warmer. B, the days are getting longer. C, there's more rain and less snow. Or D, they look at their calendars, like the tree in this image. What do you think? Okay, perfect. So we're getting a couple different answers and that's actually perfectly fine. So in some cases, depending on the species, there might be a couple of different things that are leading to our plants going through these changes. But for the most part, it's going to be option A. It's getting warmer. So plants are paying attention to the temperature outside. They're noticing when that winter starts to fade away and when we start to get these warm temperatures in the springtime. So one of the things that I wanna talk about is kind of a big picture concept here. So now a lot of us have probably heard about weather and you, some people might have heard about climate and how those two things are related but different. So climate is when you look at the weather or excuse me, weather is when you look at your, maybe you look at your phone app or you look outside to see if it's going to rain today or if it's going to be warm today and whether you should bring a coat or whether you wanna wear shorts. So if it's something that changes every single day, that's gonna be more like weather. But climate is going to be something that happens over a long period of time. So this doesn't change as dramatically every single day. It's going to be pretty constant. And to help illustrate this, we can think of a couple examples. So I think that all of you are visiting from all over the US. Um, so there might be some people who are from places in Southern states. So let's take an example of Florida. If you are from Florida, and you can let me know if you're from Florida in the chat. If you're from Florida, um, you generally have a relatively warm climate. It might get cold there a couple of days a year, but in general, it's pretty warm in Florida. That means your climate is warmer. Now let's compare that to Canada, which is north of the United States. I don't know if we have visitors in Canada, but if you're from Canada, let me know. You can type in the chat. So Canada tends to have a colder climate than Florida. Now we might still have warm days in Canada, but overall the climate is going to be colder than Florida. Okay, so one of the things that we need to keep in mind here when we're talking about climate is that climate doesn't change day to day, but overall the Earth's climate is getting warmer. And you might've heard people talk about climate change or global warming. So that is when the entire globe is changing. So this is a big process that is happening. And this has a lot of effects on plants. So as the climate warms, it's going to have a couple different impacts. One thing that happens is that our winters are going to be warmer than usual. 
So we might not get as cold a winters as we've seen or expected historically. And this can also mean that our spring is going to come earlier and earlier in the calendar year. So for instance, if we have spring right now and it's April, maybe we consider that historically normal. However, if our springs get earlier and earlier and earlier, we might start to see the same warm weather that we expect in April, in March, maybe even February in the future. So we can see our springs start to happen earlier and earlier in the calendar year. So that season is shifting when it happens. So you might be thinking, that sounds great. I love spring. That's my favorite season. So why wouldn't I want it to come earlier? So the reason that this can be bad for plants, we'll illustrate an example here. Um, this can have a negative effect on the processes that plants are supposed to go through. So the ones that we just outlined when we played our guessing game, the new leaves and the flowers in the spring, and then the fruits in the, in the summer and leaves falling off in the fall. So let's look at this example here. If we have this tree that is experiencing an early spring, maybe an earlier than usual spring, and it's got its leaves, it's got its flowers, everything seems okay. But what happens when we get a late snowstorm? So this is also unexpected. We've got the tree thinking that it's springtime. It already put out its leaves, it's already put out its flowers. It's expecting the temperature to just keep getting warmer and warmer to go into summer. But because we had this early spring, we might get a late snowstorm, a late frost. So if it snows on our tree, that's going to be a big problem for those flowers. And if our flowers are not healthy, they're not going to be able to create fruit and we need fruit. We need fruit to eat. There are animals that need fruit off these trees to eat. It's a really important part of the life cycle for the plant as well. So if we have this problem of an early spring and a late frost, we're not going to get the fruit that we need from our trees. So we can see an example of this happening in real life. You can see the picture of the flowers here on the side of your screen. Now take a look at those petals. Do those look healthy? Do they look normal? They look a little bit discolored to me. You can see in some places they're even see-through. That's not what we want our flowers to look like. That's not a healthy flower. So that happened because our flowers came out too early because of early spring, and then it snowed on them. So this is what happens when these flowers come out and then they experience really cold temperatures and a snow. And what this can lead to is that we don't get the same fruit production that we would expect to get. So this can affect the fruit that farmers get. And ultimately this can affect the fruit that we eat that we get from the grocery store. So while we're talking about plants and we're learning about plants today, it's really important to keep in mind that plants are connected to everything. So like we learned at the very beginning of this talk, we rely on plants for our food, for our homes, for our furniture, for our paper. They're everywhere, we use them every day. And we're not the only organisms that use plants. So there are insects that are relying on plants. They are their pollinators like bees and butterflies that fly to flowers and they're able to interact with those flowers and get pollen and nectar that they need. And the flowers need those insects as well. Now we talked a little bit about other organisms that use plants for shelter or for food. Birds might be using the fruit of plants and they might have their homes and plants as well. So plants are connected to birds and other animals too. And ultimately, if plants are affected, that could impact our food supply. So we're talking about plants today, but I want you to remember that plants are connected to everything else. So it's really important that our plants are healthy so that the rest of these things, insects, plants, birds, people, they're all connected. So we all need plants to stay healthy. So what did we learn in this section? We talked a little bit about climate change and how that's creating winters that are warmer and springs that start earlier. And we learned about how this is a problem, not just for plants, but that it can also impact a lot of other animals, including us people and our food supply. Okay, so one of the things that I wanna talk with you about is how you can help with this. So if this is interesting to you and you want to learn more about plants, 
and you want to learn more about how you can help save plants, you can do that with Bud Burst. So all you need to do is learn about the plants that are around you. And like we've already talked about, if you're noticing the seasonal changes outside, that it's springtime, if you notice when the leaves start to change in the fall, you are already doing this. So you can do this with Bud Burst and you can help us answer these big questions about how plants are changing. So all you have to do is look at plants throughout the seasons and see what they're doing as they go through their year. As you look at them in the spring, in the summer, fall and winter, you tell us what your plants are doing and then that helps Bud Burst. So you can become a scientist with Bud Burst and we are going to get some practice doing that ourselves. But first we're gonna talk about plant parts. So when we are looking at plants, it's really important for us to look at what each plant part is doing. That's how we keep track of what our plants are doing throughout each season. So you can see in this diagram, we have a couple of different plant parts labeled. Uh, the ones that we keep track of for Bud Burst, the project that I work on, are leaves, flowers, and fruits or seeds. So we are going to look at a couple of plants and try to find these parts on them. So let's look at some close-up plants. Okay, let's get this chocolate bar out of the way. We're gonna save that for after this talk. Okay, so you can see here, this is a plant and we are going to talk about a couple of its different plant parts. So remember on that diagram, a couple of the things we're looking at are plant leaves. So we can see that this plant clearly has leaves. These look like pretty established leaves. They don't look brand new. So this is what we would keep track of for the plant leaf part. Now we can also see pretty clearly that we've got flowers on this plant as well. We've got four different flowers and these look like they're in full bloom. They're big, these blossoms look healthy. So we're keeping track of both the leaves and the flowers. Now we can look on this plant and see that we don't really have any fruit here and that's okay. It's okay for all of our plants. They don't necessarily have to have every single part present every time that we look at them. So if you look at a plant in the spring, you might not see fruits yet because remember we see fruits in the summertime. So they come a little bit later. So on this plant, we can keep track of the leaves and the flowers. So we would write down that information or we would type it in a computer and you could send this to Bud Burst. And then I would get that information and you'd be helping me with this project. Now we got another plant to look at here. This one is a little bit bigger. And again, we can see that we've got these leaves on our plant. These look pretty healthy. They also look like grown up leaves. They don't look brand new. And we've got some flowers here on this plant, these white flowers. So now we can see close up of these flowers. They look like they might be fading a little bit. And you can see here, there's one that isn't alive anymore. So this is a withered flower. So we wanna keep track of what plants what plant parts we see, we've got leaves and we've got flowers, and also what those plant parts are doing. So you'd be able to tell me that you've got flowers, but they might be on their way out. They might be fading. And that's all important information for bud burst. And again, we don't see any fruits on this plant. That's okay. We might not see fruits on every plant. We might not see every part on every plant. Okay. And then... The last thing I wanna share here is that if you liked looking at those plants, if you think those plants are interesting and you think that you could do that yourself, if you could go outside into your neighborhood or into your backyard and you could find plants that have flowers or that have leaves or that have fruits, you can become a budber scientist. So if you're interested in looking at the plants around you and letting us know what each plant part is doing, you can help us. Um, if you are younger than 13, then you're going to need a parent, guardian, or teacher to help you. If you're over 13, you can make an account by yourself, and you can learn more at budburst.org for how to do that, or you can click that QR code that's on the screen. 
And right now is the perfect time to start this project. So it is spring in a lot of the US, if you are in the US right now, uh, you can go outside and you can look at the flowers and the trees. You can document what leaves are coming up uh, on those plants and if you see any flowers blooming. So this is a great time to start on this project and to get outside and explore and learn more about plants. Okay, so we are almost done. I want to ask all of you to type in the chat and tell me something that you learned today. So type in the chat, let me know what you remember, tell me what you learned today or what part of the talk you enjoyed. Does anybody remember that big word that we learned? If you can remember that, type that in the chat. Okay, so some people are saying we did the guessing game for the seasons, uh, that's perfect. So we looked at an apple tree throughout all four seasons. Um, some people remember this big word, it's phenology. So that is the study of the timing of seasonal changes in plants. So if we did that guessing game, that was phenology. Okay, perfect. And then we look at different plant parts. So we're gonna look at flowers, we can look at leaves and fruits, that's fantastic. Okay, so this is what I came up with. So we learned that plants are an important part of our lives. They are all around us. We eat them every day. They might be making up our homes or the furniture in our homes. So we use plants every day. We rely on them. And they also rely on us for protection. So we can talk about that at the end of this. Um, they go through seasonal changes just like us. So they might not be putting on a winter jacket but they are going to put out new leaves in the spring. They're going to lose their leaves in the fall and the winter. So they go through seasonal changes too. And you can help us study those seasonal changes. We also learned that warm winters and early springs can be bad for plants because it can hurt their flowers that have come out too early. And that can decrease the amount of fruit that we get from plants. So that can affect plants and it also can affect people. And we learned that you can help save plants by becoming a Budburst scientist. So if you liked this talk and you liked looking at plants close up, you can do more of that with Budburst and we can help you get started. Okay, so that is the end of this presentation. Thank you so much for coming and talking with me. Before you go, we are going to do a selfie and I'm gonna let Haley come on and talk a little bit more about that. All right, everyone. So as you get your cameras at the ready, as a quick reminder, if you post those selfies on Instagram and you tag us here at Varsity Tutors and Chicago Botanic, you'll have the opportunity to win a Flower Families game as well as a three-month subscription to VT+. And as a quick reminder, VT Plus offers hundreds of classes on topics from art to archaeology, math to magic, and everything in between. And as a VT Plus subscriber, you can take as many of those classes as you'd like. So you can focus on things you know you love and discover new passions along the way. And if you don't win, that's okay. VT Plus is available for just $19 a month. So it looks like we are ready to go. If you haven't already, go ahead and lean into the screen for that photo and if you happen to have that plant-related item from your scavenger hunt, feel free to include that in the photo. All right, wonderful. Thank you so much, everyone. It looks like we are ready to move forward and we've gotten some really wonderful, uh, wonderful questions that I'd love to pose to Dr. Emma. So if we're ready to roll, we've got some really great student questions coming your way. So to go ahead and get things started, we had lots of folks who were interested in how they can help uh, using their green thumbs as well. So what types of plants can students plant? And in particular, we had some questions of what types of plants are good for bees in particular? That's a great question. So um, the plants that will work for budburst, if you want to be a budburst scientist, is really any plant that you find outside. So I know I was showing you examples of plants that we're keeping inside, but that's just for this talk. So normally, if you want to be a budburst scientist, you're gonna to wanna to find any plant that is outside. And really that could be any plant that you find. So we do all kinds of plants at Budburst. You can look at 
wildflowers, you can look at big trees. If you're in a place that has evergreen pine forests, you can look at pine trees as well. And if you're a real expert, you can look at grasses. Um, so there's a number of different plants and different plant groups that you can look at for budbers. So if you find a plant outside that is blooming or going through a change that you want to document, you can go ahead and send that information over to Budburst. And uh, we actually have a brand new tool right now. So if you are able to download our Budburst app, you can use this on your phone. Uh, you can also do this on a computer. If you take a picture of the plant that you're looking at, the app will tell you what kind of plant it is. So you don't have to be an expert. You don't have to know everything about plants. In order to participate, you can take a picture and our app will help you learn about plants and tell you what kind of plant you're looking at. And um, if you want to get pollinators in your garden, if you want to get bees, you can grow a number of different types of plants. Um, right now I'm in Chicago and we have a lot of prairie plants over here. Um, I know that prairies might not be everywhere across the US, but that's a type of garden that is really good for pollinators. We have some plants called milkweed plants that grow up really tall and have these big bushels of flowers on them. And we have a special project with milkweed where you can look at the types of pollinators that come to your milkweed plant. Um, and you can look at the caterpillars that are on that plant um, and the butterflies that are visiting it as well. So that's a great plant if you want to get pollinators that are butterflies to come and visit you in particular. Wow, that's fantastic. And we have, it looks like several future plant scientists in the mix who are wondering what got you personally interested in plants and what sorts of things did you do to pursue a career in plant science? That's a great question. Um, I actually started getting interested in plants when I was a pretty young myself. It was when I was in high school, I was 14 years old and I took a really good biology class. And I loved the things that we learned in that class about plants and about climate change and these big problems that were facing all of us and ways that we could help fix those problems. So that's when I started being interested in biology and in plants. And I kept studying that in school. And now I have this wonderful job at a botanic garden where I get to be surrounded by plants every day. Wow, thank you so much. And uh, we had some questions around a little more of the particulars of how plants are able to feel the weather. And we saw some cases where plants are able to kind of tell us how they're feeling. Are there ways that they communicate to one another as well? Wow, those are really good questions. Um, yes, so plants are able to uh, get a feel for the weather in really a similar way to the way we do. So they are experiencing their environment. So um, it's, it's kind of complicated and I'm not sure that I have all of the details that we might want for this question, but think about when you are in your house in the summertime and maybe you have an air conditioner in your house and then you go outside and it's really hot and you notice all of a sudden. So what is the way that you notice that? It's kind of a, a full sensory experience. You're immersed in this warm weather and it's the way that it interacts with your skin, it's the way that it affects your temperature. So plants are not in the exact same way that people are able to absorb that information, but plants are outside experiencing weather, they're experiencing temperature. It's changing uh, the amount of moisture that is available. Like in one of the slides, we talked about moisture coming down as snow versus as rain. So that's a different kind of input that those plants are getting and they're able to respond to the weather, to the temperature, to um, these things that signal to them, it's a different season. And it might not be as clear as a calendar like we look at at home, but they're able to tell when temperatures change. And like I mentioned a little bit, they do also have a way to see uh, when day length changes. So just like when we experience day length changing as well, they're also able to notice the day is getting longer and that tells them um, that it's turning into spring and into summer as well. 
So on a very similar note, you already addressed, I think, part of this question, but what about those plants that live in climates where the temperature stays pretty consistent or even the daytime stays pretty consistent? How do they tell when the seasons are changing? Yeah, so in plants like that, so we talked a little bit about Florida in this talk and how Florida generally has a warmer climate. So let's think about Florida a little bit more. So Florida is not going to have as dramatic of seasons as, um, for instance, like we talked about Canada, Canada versus Florida. So Florida is going to be generally warmer for most of the year. They might not have as dramatic of a winter versus a summer. It's gonna be hotter in the summer, but their winter isn't that cold. Whereas in Canada, you're gonna have a very cold winter and then you have uh, not as hot of a summer as Florida, but still a warmer summer. So if you're a plant in Florida, you might not go through the exact same seasonal changes. And a lot of times in climates where the weather is warm for a lot of the year, you might see green leaves for the entire year. You might not see plants change colors or lose their leaves in the fall and in the winter. So you are gonna see different seasonality. So I know that there are people on this call from all over the country. If you're in a place that doesn't have the dramatic four seasons, that's okay. You can still do bud burst. You don't have to have all those four seasons to participate for us. So when you enter information into bud burst, you would tell us I'm in Florida. And then we would know, oh, okay, this person is in Florida. So maybe it makes sense for them to have all green leaves on this plant in December. So we're taking into account both where you are and what your plant is doing. So plants in really warm climates are not gonna go through the same seasonal changes as plants in places that have these dramatic four different seasons. All right, and we had lots of different plant superlative related questions. So the biggest plants and the smallest plants and favorite plants. So maybe <laughs> to kind of put all those together into one, could you speak to maybe a couple of your favorite plants or plants that you find particularly interesting to observe? Yes. So one of the ones that immediately comes to mind was actually when you said the biggest plant that I've seen. So one of, it's not the biggest plant that I've seen, but it's the biggest flower that I have ever seen. And it is a plant called the corpse flower. So kind of a scary name, uh, but it is a plant that can grow taller than me. And I'm 5'9", so I'm pretty tall. So this is a plant and the flower is bigger than I am. So it's bigger than a lot of people. And the flower grows really, really tall. And one of the special things about this plant, it's a very special plant. It only blooms once every seven years, once every 10 years. So it opens its flower very rarely. So it's a very special plant to get to see when it blooms. Um, and it also smells bad. So the name corpse flower is because it smells like rotting meat. So it doesn't smell nice and pretty like a rose or like a lot of the flowers that we're used to. It smells like rotting meat. And it smells that way because it's pollinated by things like flies that are attracted to that smell. So it's a very special plant. And um, I've gotten to see one in real life that was blooming before. So it is a very special big deal to see that plant. Wonderful. And we also had quite a few students who maybe grabbed some unusual or not food related items for their scavenger hunt. I know you gave uh -huh. us a couple of examples of not so food related items that do still come from plants. And we had lots of questions for, well, does medicine come from plants? Does soda come from plants? So could you speak a little more to maybe some of those unusual things that still come from plants? Yes. Yeah. Those are really good ideas. Um, a lot of medicine comes from plants. So plants are a really amazing source for medicinal cures to things. That's actually a really excellent point. I'm glad that this came up because part of the reason why we want to protect plants and to help conserve plants and their habitats is because plants are such a good source of medicine for us. So they can help us when we feel sick. They can help us um, cure things that we're not able to cure in other ways. So a lot of medicine has or a lot of plants have very medicinal purposes for a number of different things. Um, so one example that maybe 
people are familiar with is aloe vera. So this comes from an aloe plant and you might have aloe vera, like if you get a sunburn or if you get a cut, you can put aloe vera on your skin and that can be very soothing to you. So that is from an aloe plant. And uh, I bet there are some people who have aloe plants in your home right now. Maybe that's the plant that you brought. Um, and one of the other examples that uh, I didn't bring and I didn't show you right here, but it's, it's another place in this room, is a hand sanitizer that is plant-based. So I know everyone has been using hand sanitizer um, for a lot of the past year but we actually can get hand sanitizer that is plant-based as well. Oh, and yes, we've got an example here, perfect. So we've got this hand sanitizer that is plant-based. So we can get things like this, we can get things like medicine that come from plants as well. So that's a really good question. Um, and if you found things like medicine in your home when you were looking for that, you have a very good likelihood that that did come from a plant. Well, certainly not just the things that we find in our refrigerator. Thank you so much. And it does look like we are about out of time. So I'd love to ask, do you have any closing thoughts? I know you've given us plenty of wonderful resources so far, but any closing thoughts for students who are interested in getting more involved? Yes, uh, yes, we do have a couple things. And I, I put up this slide to show everyone a couple of um, links that you can go to. So we have a lot of things that are going on at Budverse right now. Um, if you are interested in becoming a Budverse scientist and making more observations on your own, we would love to have you help us. And if that is interesting to you, you can go to budverse.org and you can go to budverse.org slash getting started, the link at the top here. And that will help you get started with Budverse. You can make an account. You can learn about the different types of observations that you can make what sorts of plants you can look at, um, and how to use our plant identification tool. Um, as I mentioned before, if you are younger than 13, you're going to need a parent or guardian or teacher to help you with that. If you're over 13, you can do this on your own. Um, and the other thing that I want to mention, which might be of interest for the folks that are on this call, is that we are partnering with Scholastic. To They have created a curriculum using Budburst the Plant Trackers Contest. And that is the second link up there, scholastic.com slash Budburst. So you can go there. Um, this is some activities that students and teachers and students or kids and parents can do together to learn about Budburst, learn more about plants. And there is a contest associated with Scholastic where you can win fabulous prizes. Um, so if you participate in the scholastic activities and you're able to submit to the contest, you can win a prize. And that can be both with families and with teachers. So um, that's open to everyone who wants to participate. And the grade range for that is students in grades three through six. So I think a lot of folks on this call. Wow, thank you so much, Emma. And we'll have that first link on screen at the close of the lesson as well. But I wanna give one more great big thank you on behalf of not just Varsity Tutors, but all of the students tuning in today, uh, both to Emma and the rest of the team at Budburst. And thank you to all of you who are tuning in live for all of your thoughtful questions, for all of your responses and interaction. Now the team at Budburst will be rejoining us to share more about what we can learn from the plants all around us and in our backyards on April 28th. But in the meantime, we do hope to see you all back in another STEM success series very soon. And we hope to see all of those selfies. So don't, don't forget to post and tag us at Varsity Tutors as well as Chicago Botanic to win. Thank you so much again, everyone. Bye.